Hi there, welcome to another video of mine. My name is Paul Moreira, as you may know by now, and today we shall have a look at a Fujika camera. I normally uh, don't have the occasion of uh, buying uh, many Fujika cameras, I don't know why, but those that I usually buy are rangefinder cameras rather than SLRs. Uh, I have this one that was donated by a friend of mine and this is the ST801, an SLR from Fuji that by then um, baptized their cameras as Fujika, which makes a lot of sense to me. And it was a camera launched at the same time, more or less, as the Olympus OM-1 and it shares some similarities uh, in technical terms and in uh, design philosophies so don't think about copy it's not that it's just that this camera tried to shrink down the size of SLRs just like the Olympus OM-1 when, or OM series when they were presented and so just if you never saw a uh, Fujika ST-801 in the flesh let's compare it with the Canon FTB, which is a widely available camera that everybody knows, and you can immediately see that the Fuji is more than one centimeter smaller, it's not so tall, it's slimmer, and especially there's something that I cannot show you it's the weight. I think the FTB is almost twice the weight of this one. I really have to get a scale to prove my allegations, but it sure feels like a ton and a half, and this, this one not even a ton, <laughs> kidding, but this is incredibly heavy. It also has the same lens, uh, I mean basically the same lens, this is a 50mm 1.4, just like this one. So this Fujik in particular does not have its original lens. It has this lens from a Shinon camera called the Auto Shinon, made by Tomioka. It's a 55 1.4 lens, so it's a nice lens with a good aperture. The camera is, like we just saw, quite compact. It's not Olympus compact, but again, it doesn't feel so fragile as uh, I think the Olympus OM uh, series, fragile is not the mm, best word to describe it, but they, are, they look and feel delicate. And this one doesn't uh, feel that uh, delicate, but it lacks refinement. It doesn't have the refinement of the Olympus OM series. And by that, I mean that the shutter, for instance, the shutter sound is really loud and it kicks. Let's fire this at 1 30th of a second. Of course, this room reverberates a lot, so um, the sound that you hear might not be exactly the sound that the camera makes. But this shutter it vibrates a bit, it's loud. But it has a trick up its sleeve. It's um, a shutter that is horizontally run, not vertical, but instead of stopping at one thousandth of a second, it goes all the way to one two thousandth of a second. And for its day, this was really pretty quick. This is a, a really a top of the range shutter. Um, I can remember the Nikon F2 having uh, shutter going that fast, horizontally run, and later on the Olympus uh, OM-4, uh, I don't know the OM-3, but I believe so, that it had also uh, shutter going this fast. So it was really um, a great um, shutter for its day, not very usual to find in this category of cameras. Also very unusual is the fact that the ST-801 
featured LEDs and you can see here, I don't know if the camera will focus, there is a letter LED and this, there is stylized uh, LED on the D because this was the first camera in the world to use LEDs to indicate exposure and it's done in a rather nice way. You could have expected, you know, just three LEDs like minus, plus and OK. But no, it features more than three LEDs. In fact, it divides exposure into one-thirds of exposure for under and over exposure. So you can finally tune your exposure if you trust the meter. Speaking of the meter, that's the only thing in the camera that needs battery because the camera is fully mechanical. And so a fully mechanical camera with, uh, with a shutter like this, it's really very hard to find uh, for the price and at that time there weren't many others on the market with a similar shutter. Well, if you look closely, you see that especially you guys that are not connected to film photography, you might, this prism shape might look familiar to you. And when it is, because Fuji, when they launched the X-T series, they revived the, um, the prism of this series of cameras, because this series of cameras was very important to them. It was their best series of reflex cameras, I believe. And so they revived this, this styling on their new digital mirror, mirrorless cameras, which, which was a really a nice touch. Although people like to call it flat prism, it's not flat really. It's just nice. So, the camera being all mechanical is very simple to use. You set your ISO settings here from ISO 25 to 3200 which of course uh, it's normal because the camera has the shutter speed to match this. There is a hot shoe here, it's a plain hot shoe so no TTL, no flash ready light, nothing. Of course you select your speeds here, this is your rewind crank there is no provision for a motor drive, <coughs> I'm sorry, although I am, <coughs> I am convinced that there is a model, a rare model, that has provision for an attachment of a window, but I am not really sure. Not really sure, because um, it never crossed my mind to have a Fuji camera, reflex camera. This camera was donated, like I told you. And so uh, I'm not a really a great connoisseur of Fuji cameras or Fujika cameras in general. I mean the, the SLRs at least. The rangefinder is uh, the rangefinder cameras are different. I have a few of them and they're really very nice cameras. So let's open our Fujika. This Fujika has suffered a bit. It um, opens to this way, this side. And it sports uh, an horizontal shutter, like we have seen and talked. It's, this one still needs to be cleaned, because, uh, and the light seal is replaced, because each time I clean it, um, the light seals are deteriorating, so it becomes you know, full of debris and stuff. Coming to the other side, in front, we have the self-timer. We have this button here, which is the depth of field preview. And you can even hold it down by turning this knob. This is to uh, allow for lenses that do not have the auto and manual position, like this one. So, this lens is in auto position, meaning that when I use the diaphragm, nothing really happens. If I change it to manual, then it happens. But some lenses do not have this 
uh, selector. And so Fuji made this smart thing. This is to have a, um, a permanent stop down system. Very nice. And of course, probably you have guessed it by now, this is an M42 screw mount camera. Uh, you might be fooled to think that it was a bayonet mount camera because of this selector here and disengaging ring, uh, pin, sorry. So, but it is a mount that has uh, some differences with the normal Practica or Pentax screw mount. So this pin locks the lens into place so that any involuntary unscrewing is impossible and it has also a very small pin here that activates this ring around the mount and this is the diaphragm simulation for the meter if you are um, familiar with Nikon cameras this is exactly the same system that Nikon came up, the uh, AI system, and perhaps they had a really close look at this Fujika. Uh, trouble is, um, the, the main advantage of the system is that it allows for the meter to work with open TTL, meaning that you can focus and meter with the image being right at the maximum aperture of the lens. Trouble is, just like the, the practical system, um, for lenses who do not have the pin, um, those non-Fujika lenses, like this one, you have to uh, make the readings in stop-down metering. The same happens with the uh, practical system, although the practical system is not mechanical, is electric or electronic if you wish. Now, here you have the connection for flash and studio flash and we've come here to this part because of the viewfinder. The viewfinder is, is nice. Um, you, can, you have the LEDs on your right and at the corner, left bottom corner, you've got the speeds, shutter speeds that you have selected. So it's nice because you really don't have to remove your eye from the camera. It would have been better to have the apertures too, but hey, it's a bit complicated with the screw mount uh, camera to, do, uh, to have that, I know. Uh, here it would be almost impossible because of the the shape of the prism if you wanted to put a reflective system or something. The people say that the uh, viewfinder is one of the brightest ever, blah 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 blah. Well, I have many SLRs and screw mount SLRs um, and uh, of course I I wasn't born uh, I wasn't really, I was, I was already born in 1973 but I really don't have any idea of all the cameras that were launched at that time and were on sale at that time. Comparing this Fuji, for instance, with the Practic uh, uh, L series, then this viewfinder is from 1973. Um, this viewfinder is really fantastic. It's bright, it's, it's big, it's everything that the Practic isn't. Comparing with this, the difference, to tell you the truth, is not so uh, so big. And comparing with the last series of Practicus M42 mount cameras, the MTL50 for instance, then I find the MTL better. But again, it's uh, what almost 15 years of difference. So uh, the Practica had more than time to come up with something better. So uh, the viewfinder is nice. Uh, but from my experience and from M42, from all the M42 cameras that I have, it's not the, the best by far, like some people say. 
perhaps it's a problem of this particular camera that I have uh, that has been has been used and abused as you can see but it's um, it's a nice viewfinder but it's not extraordinarily bright even if it has uh, 1.4 lens like it is the case here one thing that I dislike about it is this lever, this articulated lever, because it has, uh, it, it induces some play and it's not really a pleasure to, it's not a tactile pleasure, to be honest. This vibrates a bit and um, of course this is an old camera that has seen a lot of work. Uh, perhaps not all of them behave like this, but uh, I think this system, this articulated system, is not really, I don't, doesn't really inspire confidence in me. The camera uses a 6 volt battery, the normal uh, 4LR44, which is very nice, so you can easily find one or make yourself one, so it's always uh, available. Of course, you don't need it to use the camera as long as you know what you are doing because it's perfectly possible to take pictures without a meter. I think I haven't forgot anything about the ST801. I think it's very, a very good looking camera. It's small. It could have been better in terms of silence but it has really a, a race, a racing shutter here, so we must forgive it for it and also for all the years and misuse that this model has had. In short, it was a pleasant surprise. Um, I was surprised with this camera. Like I told you, it was donated, so I didn't have to buy it. And um, it's very rare to find where I live a Fujika SLR. And I am very happy that my friend donated it to me and will take it for a spin out one of these days. Just um, after cleaning the viewfinder and uh, completing the light seals, because I don't, don't want any nasty surprises. But I think it's a, a nice camera, all in black, petite, okay, not only it was small, but very acceptable. And the best thing is that with this M42 mount, you have access to a zillion of lenses that were made either by Fuji, either by Pentacon, Carl Zeiss, Siena, Pentax with their lovely Takumas, I don't know, half the world made screw mount lenses, Tomioka, Yashica. So if you want to get started into film and not ruin yourself, the M42 uh, mount might be uh, a very nice solution. There are so many cameras that use this mount, so it's uh, a question of just waiting for the right model to, to come along. Anyway, uh, there aren't really expensive M42 mount cameras, except for some rare models, some Pentax models, but normally, if you want a good, honest, no-frills camera, they're cheap, like this one. Okay, not cheap cheap as this one was. <laughs> well, thank you for watching this long video about the Fuji KST801, a camera that I really like and uh, I, feel, I felt that it deserved uh, a little more attention because it was a landmark in its days. Thank you and hope to see you very soon in another video of mine.